Hi, welcome to Active Academy, Health at Home and Wellness at Work. Today I'll be making one of my mom's recipes, a favorite in the Jensen & Jones household now, Italian chicken and broccoli. We've got our basic lineup of ingredients here. We've got some defrosted, unthawed chicken breast. I've got some of it chopped up, but I'll show you some technique for chopping it up in a minute. We've got carrots, broccoli, some pasta that looks way fancier than it probably actually is, Italian dressing. Um, we just whipped some of this up from stuff we had in our pantry, so olive oil, the carrots out of the way for a second. Olive oil, apple cider vinegar, you can use any type of oil or vinegar type thing, so like vegetable oil would work too, or there's like white wine vinegar, red wine vinegar, all that jazz. Um, we added some Mrs. Dash garlic and herb mixture. You can use any combination of like garlic powder, or herbs, um, an Italian blend, lemon juice, and fresh red pepper for a little kick to make a nice little Italian dressing mix. I've got about a cup of Italian dressing mix, or yeah, Italian dressing mix. Take on the water really fast for our noodles. Looks like it's getting hotter, but not quite boiling. Our next trick is to add a little bit of oil to the water. As well as some salt. And that will help it cook a little faster, as well as give it a nice clean flavor. You'll notice that I'm keeping a lid on top of the water. That helps it come to a boil faster. And we've got it on high. Get the rest of these ingredients ready. We want the chicken messed up, but we didn't want to call it food safe anything. Let's start with vegetables. So I just like to most of the carrots. Um, I would suggest starting with a clean cutting board. I've been chopping up the carrots and broccoli already, so there's lots of little broccoli flakes. So mine will look a little bit messier than yours. <laughs> so a good technique is keeping your fingers flat. Chop them off. Very important to be safe. Your knife. And you start from the side further away from you and curve it down. Just like that. So you slice up these carrots. Once your carrots look about like this, you've got a good amount. You can always chop up more if you need them. I'm the broccoli crown. This has already been washed and rinsed off. Make sure that you always do that with your produce because you never know. Oops. Also clean your counters. Lots of fun tips today. All right, and as you can see, just holding it by the stock here and then chopping pretty close to where all of the florets are. That sounds a lot scarier than it is. It's just our electric stove. There must be some water residue on the pots. Or like most college students, you'll want to use every last bit of the produce that you get because um, food is expensive and you don't get paid very much as a college student, so I might as well use it. So I am leaving a little bit like extra. Some people might chop it way up here, close to the leaflet, but it still tastes like broccoli. So you can use that. You can also use the rest of the broccoli stock to make like a vegetable stock. And that tastes really good. Okay, so we've got some more broccoli chopped up. <laughs> it will all stay. And the mound mixture. Perfect. All right, so you want to go ahead and add your pasta to the boiling water directly. And then we've already added a little bit of oil, but the recipe does say that you can use a little bit of the Italian dressing mix to give it just a little bit more flavor and to keep the noodles from sticking together. So I'm going to go ahead and give that a nice stir. And we can set the timer for 11 minutes. It's already been in for a little bit, so I'll set it for 10 and we'll check and see where it's at. Now we've got our vegetables chopped up. We'll go ahead and cut the rest of the chicken. Um, the reason that I went to the chicken last is just because of food contamination. So it's on a little board. Everything's great. All right, so you just take the chicken. You can cut off any fat that you see that you don't want to have. Sometimes the fat adds a nice flavor to it but too much fat can be nasty. And you don't want to be the person that bites into some chopped chicken that's just fat. 
just chop right in there. Make some nice little strips, and then we'll go back over it and cut them the vertical way in order to make these nice little bite-sized chicken pieces. And they will shrink a little bit um, when we put them on to cook. Again, you wanna watch your knife placement here and don't chop off your fingers. I will not be held responsible for any fingers chopped off in making this dish, unless they're my own, because I take responsibility for my own actions. Uh, another tip with chicken, it is cheaper if you buy it fresh. Um, I mean, you don't need to like go buy a real, sh like a live chicken and kill it and skin it and everything for your dinner. Not that fresh. But um, we shop at Smith's, you can get fresh uh, chicken packages pretty much anywhere. Walmart would go. None of them are sponsoring this video, that's just the places that I go. <laughs> so you can typically pick it up at your local grocery store. I think that's what they technically are supposed to say in these types of videos. Um, and you can either freeze it as is and use it later, you can cook it and freeze it and then just defrost it and cook it again later. Um, I prefer to cook it fresh the day of the meal, so I just package it all up in sandwich bags, stick it in the freezer, and then take it out and defrost it when we need to. I defrosted this one in the microwave today. Um, as you can see, there's like some pieces that are defrosted well and others that cooked a little bit. If you leave it in the fridge for 24 hours beforehand, it will all be more like this nice fresh chicken look, uh, which does taste better. Alright, so we're gonna go ahead and get started on cuisine the chicken. So I've got a pan heating over here. I'm gonna add a little bit of olive oil to it. Some really exciting things happen when you're recording. The camera doesn't pick up everything because <laughs> you're in a search. So, anyways, the noodles are done. I drained them into the pot. Oh, into the sink. I'm going to go ahead and add some of our Italian dressing again so that the noodles. Do not stick together. Very important. If the noodles stick together, then you're toast. So don't let that happen. Add oil to your noodles. So, seasoning the chicken. I believe that's where we left off. I'm actually just gonna go ahead and use this. And just like pour some over top. Because that coats the chicken in some lovely seasonings. And it's mighty delicious. Too loud. I'm gonna grab a little bit more of this. Hi, it is nice and hot, and our chicken broth water is boiling. So, what I'm gonna do to help this cook. As I like to put that over top, you are boiling. So to make chicken broth, we just take these little chicken bouillon cubes. They are affordable, cheap, and they taste delicious. Wow, this doesn't really want to break up very well. Smush it and flip it in. So I'm going to take a spoon, stir until it dissolves. I'm going to turn this heat down to like the low. Whew, that takes some balance to spoon. Okay, so our chicken is cooking, our chicken broth is getting ready, our noodles are good. So, the chicken cooks really fast. So, we got our temperature thermometer here um, because that's another health safety thing, by the way. You want to cook your chicken until it comes to approximately 165 degrees Fahrenheit. This is at 189 right now, 90 and climbing, probably because of the oil. So you want to make sure you've got it properly inserted into chicken. And this one is at like 178. It was at 165 when we checked before we came back from the break. So it cooks real fast, just so you know. Um, I'm going to go ahead and set this aside for a hot second and grab a bowl. Oh, my lovely behind the scenes guy. He's the best. We're married though. So no one else can have him. Sorry. Not sorry. All right, so you want to take the chicken out and put it into a separate bowl. All right. Carrots in the pan. Same pan that you used to make the chicken. 
But don't worry because the chicken is cooked now. So the raw chicken is gone. Magic. Set that aside. Let's throw this around. Cook for like five to ten minutes. So again, whoops. I'm gonna be using the lid of magic. All right. So once the chicken, the little chicken, carrots. Once they're cooked, they should be like not super crunchy but not super soft. You go ahead and add the broccoli. I'm gonna put this on top again because. The broccoli should be steaming ish slash cooking. So there you have it. We'll now wait for the broccoli. We're gonna add two tablespoons of cornstarch. And then behind the scenes guy, I had some tips because I was like, well, I'll just put it in the chicken broth because that's what the recipe says. Ooh. And then he was like, no, you can't do that. So he said to add one tablespoon of cold water. Two tablespoons of cold water. So equal parts of water and two starch. And then stir. So you want to dissolve the cornstarch into the water. Like so. Okay, dissolve. Now we add it to the chicken broth. Like so. See? Not even any corn starch residue left in the plate. Fantastic. And stir that up. Alright, let's check on the broccoli. Yay, broccoli. Alright, so it's still green. Ooh, we're getting a char on the bottom. That's what happens when you don't stir veggies. It's still pretty crunchy. I'm gonna add more of this real fast. So, we're gonna go ahead and add the chicken back in first. Add the leaves. Consult the recipe often to make sure that you're not doing anything wrong. Yep. Chicken goes in. All right, and I just like to kind of fold in that chicken. And by fold, I do mean fold. It kind of looks like this. You like go underneath and then like pull up your spatula over. All right. And now we're gonna add the chicken broth. Ooh. Ooh, but we're gonna make sure it's nice and stirred first. All right. just want to stir this around so that it's getting coated nice. We're going to go ahead and turn this down to low. Wow, the right ear is on. That's interesting. And just set this right on top to let the broccoli finish steaming. So at this point, you're going to wait till the broccoli is not too crunchy, but like not too soft. Uh, you're going to stir it again. And then you're gonna serve it over noodles. So we'll get a shot of that when we're done. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and scoop this onto our lovely plate of noodles. So pretty, so delicious. All right, so now we're just gonna take some basil and put as a nice little garnish on top. Oh, and the final touch, I almost forgot. Parmesan cheese. This stuff is gold. You just sprinkle a little bit on top. And voila, Italian chicken and broccoli. Brought to you by Brianna Jones at Active Academy, Health at Home, and Sunday.